Good morning. For those of you who don't know, my name is Maya Karen. I run a fashion blog called Classically Kept. It does feature luxury, contemporary, and how to style and now and natural hair care. So if you were into any of those things, please consider subscribing to my channel. Click the notification bell. That way you will never miss a video. So today's video is probably one of the most not requested videos, but one of the most things that I get asked whenever someone sees the length of my hair or when they realize that my hair is real. So today I have 11 tips of how to retain your length, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so before we get into the 11 tips, I want to make a couple of things very clear. Like I said, a lot of people will ask me, how do I get my hair to grow so long? And really what they are asking me is, how do I retain my length, okay? So let's kind of talk about length retention and let's talk about growth, because I know people sometimes you know, use those words interchangeably. Your hair is always growing. It might not seem like it, but it is. The reason why your hair does not seem like it is growing is because you are not retaining the length that you are growing. So whenever you look up, you know, how fast or how long or how many inches does someone's hair grow a year, a month, what have you. It's anywhere typically from one fourth, half of an inch to an inch. There are several factors that play a role in that, two of them being number one, of course, genetics. But somebody might be taking some type of, you know, whether that person is pregnant, their hair is going to grow a little bit faster. Somebody might be taking bio, biotin. Somebody else might be taking hair, skin, and nails. I tried that. It's not for me. I'm already a hairy enough person. Um, but there are different factors that go that that go into that. But when someone asks someone, "Hey, how do you get your hair to grow so long?" What they really mean is, "How do you retain the length that you have already grown?" Okay. So my eleven tips are how to retain your length. Okay. The first one, which you know, goes with just being in society, living in the world, trends. If you want to retain your length, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with trends, but you need to watch out what trends you are following. I will give you three examples really quickly. The first one, which I keep seeing pop up as a new hairstyle, I think they're called poodle braids or poodle twists. It's basically you like take groups of your hair and you use headbands or you use um, bobby pins, not bobby pins, what are they? Um, headbands. Um, I can't think of the name, it's missing me right now. Ponytail holder, we'll call them ponytail, rubber bands. You use rubber bands and you just kind of go down, and I'll put a picture right here. You just kind of go down your hair and you just put them right there. Depending on how that's done, depending on how tight that is, that can break your hair off so, 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 so badly. Especially the, um, why can I not think of this rubber bands, especially the rubber bands that are right at your scalp. If they are very tight, they can actually pull your hair and you will start to see breakage in your in your scalp. OK, so your hair won't even be, won't even come all the way down like it needs to. But you need to watch out what trends you are following when it comes to products, when it comes to styles. I will give you two examples of products. I have no idea where these came from. The one video I'm getting ready to talk about is no longer up, but there was this person who was selling whale sperm for hair growth. I have no idea where it came from. I've mentioned this before and I've tried looking it up and I guess YouTube decided to take it down. But there was a person selling whale sperm for natural people or for women who had curly hair to grow their hair. You have no idea whether or not you are allergic to whale sperm or what ingredients are in the whale sperm. The second thing is monostat. As a woman, we all know what monostat is. I'm not really sure where the trend came from and I'm not really sure if it's as big as it is several years back, but I understand the idea of it, you know, so you make sure that your scalp is clean but that's not the skin that monostat is meant for, okay? So be very careful the trends that you are following. I understand you wanna be cute, I understand you wanna be current, but you don't want to be so current or you don't want to follow every single trend and then the health of your hair has fallen by the wayside, okay? Number two, keep your ends tucked away. This is probably one of the most important tips that I'm going to give in this video. And it's as simple as that. Keep your ends tucked away. You will notice that if I'm not shooting, or not notice because you're not in my house, but if I am not shooting a video, if I'm not at a photo shoot, if I'm not out of the house, my hair, especially my ends, they're up. 
I don't just have my ends, you know, rubbing on my clothing and just being out every single day. My hair is typically wrapped up, especially if I'm working on an assignment and I'm very busy. I go from bonnet, brush teeth, wash face, maybe put on some mascara if I needed a little bit of moisture and I wrap my hair back up. And the reason why I say that is because your ends are the oldest part and most delicate part of your hair. And again, when you're talking about retention, your hair is always growing, but in order to retain that length, you have to make sure that your ends are intact. Number three, keep your hair moisturized. And if you saw my takeaways from 2021 and my hair goals for 2022, I needed to make sure that I was moisturizing my hair on a, on a regular basis. Not once a week, not once a month, not twice, you know, every two weeks. Moisture, moisture, moisture. Because again, if you don't keep your hair moisturized, more so focusing on your ends, they will break. When you have curly hair, when you have, especially when it comes to your, especially when it comes to your four Bs and your four Cs, you need to make sure that you are moisturizing your hair, okay? And most people are like, well, what do you use? You can use water. Water, or I, I typically use aloe vera juice. Water will always, always, always make your hair moisturize, okay? Then you can add your products and you can add your sealants, your emollients, all of that, but water. Keep your hair moisturized, it is very important. Number four is deep condition. And again, this was a goal that I wanted to make sure that I did myself in 2022. Deep conditioning, shampoo, which typically if you're using a shampoo that has sulfates, will strip your hair of its natural essential oils and all of that. You use the conditioner to put it back, but also you need to deep condition your hair. It doesn't take very long, we are in 2022, most of the time when you read the instructions, it will tell you anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes. You can choose to do the greenhouse effect with it. You can choose a paper bag. I typically double bag I and mean, I will sit under a hairdryer for 15 to 30 minutes and you're done. Make sure that you are consistently deep conditioning, okay? Number five, keep your hands out of your hair. I myself do have hands and hair syndrome. I have chosen to combat this by number one, always making sure that my hair is tucked my ends are tucked, and also head wraps. If you would have been, I guess, following me since maybe the latter part of 2020, you would know that I am obsessed and I'm absolutely loving head wraps right now. They make me feel beautiful, they make me feel regal. I have so many at this point that whatever color I have in my closet at this point, I pretty much have a head wrap to match. But that is how I combat it. But just make sure that you are keeping your hands out of your hair, especially if you have the same syndrome that I do. Because I will find that when my hair is down, especially when it is straight and I'm sitting in the house, my hands are consistently in my hair. Whether it's playing with the curl, whether it's brushing my hair, whether it's putting some type of product in it. I find for me that when my hair is out, my hands are always in my hair. So again, to combat that, I make sure that it's up and I just put on a very beautiful head wrap. Number six, and I know this is going to be not necessarily controversial, but this is always a topic of conversation and I will put my do's and don'ts for this um, next tip at the bottom. It is protective styling. My protective styling choice is mini twist. Again, if you have been following me since day one, you will know that I swear by my mini twist. Again, even though my hair is in a protective style because I feel like protective styles kind of get a bad rap because people don't use them or do them correctly. They don't, you know, they don't use them correctly so they don't see the benefits. Even when my hair is in mini twists, I do treat my hair as if it was out and I style it that way. Typically you will see me, you know, with the classic crown, you will see me with the bun, a top knot, or maybe like kind of a jasmine effect or a princess Leia thing going on. But even when my hair is in my protective style, I am still doing my regimen. I'm still tucking my ends. I am still making sure, you know, that I'm dusting. I'm still making sure that if a twist looks a little wonky and the ends look a little wonky, I'm chopping that off. I'm still making sure that I'm putting my products in it. Just because your hair is in a protective style does not mean that you leave it alone. You still have to do your normal or your daily routine. Okay, number seven, and I know again, this is not necessarily controversial, but it is always a topic of conversation, especially when it comes to growing hair, trimming and or dusting. Let me really quickly explain the difference. It's not necessarily a difference, but it, the technique is a little, a little different. So trimming is exactly that. Let's say for instance, like me, you are a natural who straightens their hair once a year or somebody might do it, you know, three times a year, twice a year, whatever and they actually like straighten their hair, they look at their ends and then they give like a really good trim. Some people might even consider it a cut. 
Dusting is basically just taking a portion of your hair, looking at the ends if they look a little wonky, and you might cut anywhere off from a centimeter to a half of a centimeter to a half of a half of a centimeter. Basically, dusting is just to keep up with your shaping, especially if you, if you suffer from fairy knots, okay? Trimming, make sure you are trimming your ends, okay? I know I keep seeing videos surface about women who are doing like before and after photos of like using castor oil and using, I think it's like Tresemme that has like this um, split end repair where it's supposed to like bond your hair back together. I am not a hairstylist. Um, I do have, you know, my bachelor's in biology, but at this point there is no product out there that can bond split ends together. Maybe it will glue it together for a second, but if you allow that split end to sit there, all it's going to do is eventually split back again and just go up your hair shaft. And then you will notice not only will your hair not be even or your ends will not be intact, but you will also notice that your hair is thinner, okay? Trimming your ends, although I know for a lot of women, especially when it comes to the black community, trimming your ends is like the worst thing ever. And I, I know a lot of hairstylists do become scissor happy, that's why I have learned how to trim my hair at home and that's why I make sure I keep up with it, okay? Now, as far as trimming is concerned, that is different for every individual. One person might only need to trim once a month depending on what they're doing to their hair. Somebody else might need to trim every two months, every three months, every four months, or someone might only need to trim twice a year. Again, when you are natural and really just when you're taking care of your hair in your hair journey, Listen to your hair, look at your ends. They will let you know when it's time for a trim. Number eight is going to be a routine or a regimen. Again, in that video, which I will post down below, I wanted to make sure that I was consistent. Get a routine, get a regimen, and make sure that you are consistent with it. You can't for two weeks do your regimen from Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and for the next three months do absolutely nothing. You're not going to see your hair flourish. You're not going to see your hair or you're not going to see the retention in your, the length retention in your hair. You have to get a regimen that you can do quickly or not necessarily quickly, but one that you know how to do. You wake up, wash your hair, dry, style, and you go about your day, okay? Make sure that you are consistent with your regimen. Number nine, and again, this is another topic of conversation, but for me, I have seen a world of difference because I myself have not always done this. Ladies, when you are going to sleep, make sure you are wearing some type of protective barrier between you and your pillow. I'm not even gonna say bonnet because when I say bonnet, you will have women who will say, oh, well, I can't do the bonnet thing. Fully understand. I understand that in your life, you want to be gorgeous, you want to be fabulous, every aspect of your life, every time of your life, every day of your life. I fully accept that, I fully, I, I fully, I fully um, support that, it's fine. For me personally, it's going to be a bonnet or it's going to be a head wrap. Um, I will link down below, it's YGN and Mauves. They have actually come out with sleepwear head wraps if you feel like you need to be fabulous when you are asleep. Like I said, fully support it, love being over the top. But, and here recently, I have actually bought a Blissey pillow. When I tell you I love that pillowcase, I love that pillowcase, but our sheets are bamboo, okay? They're very soft, but they are still very rigid on the hair. Just make sure that when you go to sleep, you have some type of silky protective, it could be a bonnet, it could be a head wrap, it could even be a scarf. Make sure that you are covering your hair at night, especially if your sheets and especially if your pillow are cotton. Like I said before, the friction of while you are moving around while you are sleeping is going to break off your hair. Not only is it going to break your hair off, but it is going to dry it out. And what was one of my very first tips about length retention? You need to keep your hair moisturized, okay? So ladies, I get it, but at the same time, make sure that when you go to sleep that you cover your hair. Number 10 is going to be low manipulation. And I guess we can kind of tack this on one, tack this on with hands and hair syndrome or keep your hands out of your hair and keep your ends tucked away. I have found that for me personally, and I'm pretty sure that many people can attest to this, I have found that when I leave my hair alone, low manipulation, it flourishes. Now, when I say leave it alone, again, I'm not talking about not following up with my regimen. I'm not talking about keeping my hair moisturized. I'm not talking about tucking my ends. I'm talking about just an everyday life from month to month to month to when I wash my hair, to when I install my twist, to when I tuck my ends. 
I find that when I leave my hair alone, it thrives and it flourishes, okay? So low manipulation, keep your hands out of your hair. Again, I understand where we are. I understand we have lots of trends going on, but you will also find and you will also notice that a lot of women who follow trends, especially when it comes to their hair, they don't necessarily have the healthiest hair. So if you have someone who is always dyeing their hair, if you have someone who's always wearing weaves and wigs and braids and things like that, you will notice they look cute, but actually look at, and at this point, I don't even know if they're actually rocking or wearing their real hair, but you will notice that their hair is probably very thin, very brittle and very short and probably not as thick and as healthy as it could be, okay? So low manipulation. The less you do to your hair, the more it will thrive, okay? And then the last tip that I have for you, number 11, which I went through this phase myself when I decided to do, I guess you would call it my slightly big chop. So let me go ahead and explain what I'm talking about. Especially if you are trying to grow your hair. If you are fine with the length of your hair, then this tip is not really for you. But you will find that a lot of black women, and this is for relaxed women as well, you will find that a lot of black women's length starts or ends right here. Okay, right here, kind of right here, and then maybe like right here. When you have your hair out, especially if you are trying to retain your length, you need to be careful about the texture or the material of your clothing, especially your shirt, when your hair is out and when it's at that length. The reason why I'm saying that is because I have on, while it is very soft, this is like a wool material, I got it from Aritzia, but for my hair, if it literally stops right here, for my ends to be brushing up on this very, even though it's soft, for my ends to be brushing up on this wool shirt every single day, all day, for 12 hours a day, is going to be very damaging to my ends. Same thing with kind of like a cotton shirt. So I would suggest to you maybe like silk, mulberry silk, maybe a, now I wouldn't even say taffeta. When you are wearing your hair right here, make sure you pay attention to the material that your clothing is. And then once you get past that, you can wear whatever it is you want. But again, remember, these are tips for retaining your length. And if you have on like a sweater like this, or if you have on a cotton shirt and your ends are consistently bumping up against that, it's not only going to dry your ends out, it's, not going, it's also going to thin them out and it's also going to give you split ends. And then you'll be trying to figure out, well, why isn't my hair or why haven't I retained? Remember, not grow. Your hair is always growing. Why haven't I retained my length? It may be because that while you're trying to grow your hair out or while your hair is out, it may be because of the material of your top, okay? So just be mindful of that. All right, you guys, those are all the tips that I have for you as far as retaining length. In the comments below, let me know if you have any questions. I will also leave down below the do's and don'ts of protective styling. I will also just kind of leave down my, I guess, wash day video. I finally did that. And then I will also leave down my natural hair story, okay? So I just want to remind you here on YouTube, I do up the videos every Wednesday and Sunday. And then of course, you know, right here, I'll put my Instagram handle. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, you guys. Bye.